What happens when three buffoons give life advice, explore unrealistic situations, and give random topics more thought than they probably deserve? It's the Spitballers Podcast with Andy, Mike, and Jason. A chappity chop chop, a swing a ling a ding ding. Always good when you break towards the end of your own scat. <laughs> because you're entertained by yourself. When you're uh, when you're when you're hitting the scat. It was fine if you just finished it without the it was the still, break. It was still fine with the break. But I'm saying like walking the spit wads through who have uh, you It's a complicated process. You, you no, no one out there. Look. We sit in the ivory tower. You you have no idea what the pressure is like to hit a scat for multi award winning uh the Spitballers podcast. And this is how the show starts. So you are they say go. You're like, oh crap! I don't have anything ready mm-hmm. for this. Yeah. And then you start, and you're trying to make sounds or words come out of your mouth, and at the same exact time, think of the next words and react to your own words, and then realize how stupid what you're doing is right now. I mean, it's it's tough. It's spectacular. Yeah. It was excellent fine. job. Job well done. Would you rather? What's the difference? And we are drafting the best excuses for n- not doing your chores. <laughs> to not do your chores. So, you know, the kids out there, yeah, we've gonna, got you. We're going to help you get out. Get out of... Uh, also, my kids, click the next... Go to the next Oh, episode. I mean, my list is coming straight from my kids. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they're teaching you. They've already you. taught you. This is the uh, 224th episode of the Spitballers podcast. Andy, Mike, and Jason with you. Al Borland is here. And the judge. in the. Uh, they're not in the ivory tower over there. They're in Deucer's Alley. Well, because they've never experienced. Well, I guess Owl has, what, two? When's the last time Owl did a scat? Oh, it's been a while. I think we did it when it How? was episode 200, wasn't it? No, there's a formula for it. It was like every 66 ni- episodes or oh. something like that. You've got to be getting closer. I think we're overdue. Yeah, I think we're overdue as well. Uh, no, Owl, no, Owl Owl check, check the uh, Check the formula. Run the numbers. Yep. I'll check it out. Yeah, I'm sure we're going to need to see that formula. It's going to do really good math over there, I'm think sure. we're overdue. Sounds good to me. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> uh, I, think we, I think we can just decide we're overdue. <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, let's get into it. Would you rather? All right, Sarah from Patreon. Would you rather be blind in one eye or deaf in one ear. Hmm. Wow, I've I've never really so you lose all depth perception, obviously. You need the two eyes to have true depth perception. But I guess, you know, if I close an eye, like I still I feel like I can Your your brain still sort of has it, but I wonder is how long a, would you keep it? Is there a like a auditory equivalent to losing your depth perception if you don't have both ears? Yeah, you can't hear in stereo. Oh, it's your left perception is what you'd be losing because you don't have to. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Boston. <laughs> um, I, I, I hate the fact that I think there's a clear hierarchy of senses, right? Like, you know, not all your senses are equivalent. No, sure. no, they're not. Like, you know, what are the senses, Jason? You know this. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Obviously, there's a uh, touch, mm-hmm, taste, mm-hmm. smell sight um those are some of them yeah. and uh that's four of how many six. Oh, okay we're counting the sixth yeah well the, my sixth Did is time dead? travel oh, um it's not dead people what am i missing here T- the thing that you hear uh, hearing <laughs> we're talking yeah, about yeah, we we're just talking about that <laughs> yeah but i mean clearly there are ones we would give up well ahead of other ones yeah taste and smell are not i mean they're they're awesomely important all of them are important but they are a tier below sight and sound like but hearing i don't want to diminish that side of it like i i imagine i'm going to take i want to see out of both eyes and i'm going to take half the hearing but that is it is very detrimental and i have i have some you know family that is uh struggles hearing you know wears hearing aids and it's tough because you get put into positions where like you would be surprised how much pretending you're listening to somebody you have to do or lip reading if you're hard of hearing because you know, you're in these social conversations and everybody has this default level that they say, I'm speaking at this level and you hear me and you can't have this confrontation at the beginning of every conversation. It's said, just so you know, I can't hear well. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've got a close uh, friend that has basically no hearing in one ear. Now, he has a hearing aid that he can wear, and you, it's so small, you can't tell when he's got it. So in, in that ear, he in wears that, it? Yeah, okay. in, in he that wears single it in ear. the other ear, so it's superpowered. <laughs> well, yeah. I wondered if it was completely gone in one ear. You would do that, so you have a superpowered ear. And so Which, that's, Wait, that is an interesting is that question. Some, is that something people do? I, no, I don't know. I would do that, though, I think if I would, had half my ears. But it would just blow out the eardrum. There's a maximum volume that you could put into that it. That I hadn't thought about. <laughs> So, anyways, but now, just, I, now I have no good. What ears. about a ten percent boost? But anyway, go yeah, on. Yeah, you could, you could, you could crank it up a bit. Yeah. without blowing out Pump the eardrum. Pump the jam. Um, but, but, but when you have he, this friend, when yeah. he does not have the hearing aid, literally, I mean, he can't hear you if you're on one side of him. So, I, I think it's actually, I, I lean towards having one eye. My right eye right now has is much, much worse than my left, and for a period of several years i had like a film over my right eye um which one my right braveheart eye? yeah no that's that's <laughs> a well, film. And andy it's was a with film. Oh, okay this is just a right. stupid podcast where come we on make- man roll with the punches <laughs> well i just didn't understand i mean the jokes have been so bad actually mike no it was a it was a thin layer of, <laughs> of <laughs> the mucosa <laughs> um so and and you know, I kind of got used to the film. The, I got used to Braveheart. You're watching the same one yeah, over and over. Because it, I mean, I could tell you every word of that movie, front and back. Um, uh, so I lean that I I think if you had one eye, you would adjust to, you know, the the loss of true depth perception, and I believe you'd be pretty much living the same life. Whereas I think that you will be impacted more by not being able to hear half of your world if you can't see out of one eye do you think of yourself as a cyclops i would Ooh. i would definitely call myself a cyclops and i would I'm make just, others call me that because i'm sitting here and i'm covering my right eye while we do the podcast because i was thinking my right eye is covered i might not see jason but it's not really a big deal no it, it's, i'm looking at this i'm like i'm like kind of you know you lose a little bit of peripheral vision you lose you know uh, it's obviously not better if to a have bug, one but bug flies into your eye now that's a problem you don't have a backup. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, the, the old backup eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I always think of. Uh, my right eye is my backup eye. I imagine it would. Yeah, I disagree with you completely. Good. Um, I think it would devastate you if you're playing sports or you're playing like you like to play pickleball. Uh-huh. Goodbye depth perception. Good luck in pickleball. That's going to be a problem. I used to play pickleball without glasses. I couldn't see anything. <laughs> you could make it work. Yeah, I mean, I if that's one way to describe your play, that's fine. I did um, look because I was curious. According to Healthline.com, anyways, which was, ah. was the first uh, search result, and that's as far as I will go yes. on the Google machine. We dive deep. People, uh, so essentially, if you are blind and want to, you, you can legally drive in all 50 states okay. and in the District of Columbia. Oh, thank, thank you. you. I was thank like, you. Mike, Mike, what about, what about D.C.? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nope. We're good. They're, okay. You're covered over I'm there. Bodhi- I, want my, I want both eyes. I'll figure the I'll figure out the whole blowing out my eardrum with a with a booster over there. Uh, I'm gonna go two eyes. I'm gonna go monocular vision. Okay, Cyclops and uh, Mike. I'll go. Oh man, I guess I, I'm keeping both my eyes. Really? I thought yeah. the music man would the audio guy who cares so much about the quality of but here's sound. The, here's the thing. Like you know how like you see the guys who are like super just muscular and jacked they're at the gym like they're doing pull-ups mm-hmm. and you're like wow pull-ups are really hard but then they're doing it with all the weights that's like me with two ears okay so you're saying you'll be just you fine with one. you want the challenge no i don't want the I challenge. Can't, let me tell you but this. if the challenge were to to step at my uh, to my door everything would be fine is there scientific evidence of the kind of perception that your senses improve if you lose one of them i think I, there is yeah. yes so like i would go with yes but i don't know for sure i mean the first do, google I results do. all you want to check on that i do kidding. know for sure that that is true okay. and i do, uh, based on nothing nothing <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> I'm maybe just your right declaring. ear would would gain like acumen the ability to hear because you lose one so you're going to be more sensitive to hearing no it's the other senses they make up for it so now you oh, can see better well, if I you can lose smell one ear what's going on to the exactly. left of me <laughs> yeah, exactly. okay according to washington.edu oh boy, oh boy. so people who it's are dot edu that's pretty good yeah i mean research has shown it's not a dot gov but <laughs> do you want a dot edu gov 
No, go on. <laughs> Research has shown that people who are born blind or become blind early in life often have a more nuanced sense of hearing. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm opening this can up right here, right now. If that's true, and the science proves it thanks to washington.edu or whatever, yes, of course. wherever you were at, does that mean that we as parents should be eye-patching and covering the ears of our children to hone their senses and then you give them you know, super senses. Well, the problem you, is, wait, you, you just want like one really strong eye? If you're going ears and one eye. Okay, so a full blindfold for a week to make their hearing better, cover their ears for I a week to make their sense of I, the, smell so better. The way that I understand that it works is your brain is actually like essentially giving more real estate to what's lost. So if you then gain back your sight, you lose it. You, you lose I didn't want the real answer. I wanted the superhero type of like. Then riff, don't come riffing. to the Spitballers <laughs> podcast where we know everything and we give much learning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matthew from Twitter. Would you rather be stuck in a mall for 24 hours with 15 swarms of 100 wasps? I know. I like how answer. we have to say how big the swarms are because we wouldn't understand it. Um, stuck in a mall for 24 hours. Okay. with. 15 swarms of 100 wasps, Okay. two Bengal tigers, or 100,000 scattered mosquitoes. I mean, it's, I'm wow. not picking tigers. No, that's out. That's, but no, the, the tigers is the easiest one to, to avoid. avoid. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't get away from them tigers. You, you, you hear if, okay, here's, here, okay, we need some ground rules then. Mm -hmm. Like, is every store closed? Are the are the uh, the egg, like the fire exits where the back halls? Oh, you're going to barricade yourself, or just go through a door because these are not velociraptors; they cannot oh, come man. in. I didn't no. think about the <laughs> no, no, door. No. The stores are closed, but the concourse is open, top and bottom. Okay, okay. So this is this is actually funny. I I missed the part that we were in a mall for 24 <laughs> hours at the beginning of the question i know but i where, where did you think where we were, were stuck? We? <laughs> i thought we were stuck in a room i thought we were okay. in a room then with the tigers are out <laughs> yeah if you're in a room then the tigers are out they're gonna get you're stuck in a tiger <laughs> cage <laughs> um yeah i mean honestly it's it's got it's got to be the tigers because that whole door thing i mean the <laughs> fact that you can say excuse no, me you can't do that now you didn't hear me rephrase it the oh, the, the door all the stores are closed. You're in the concourse. Oh, okay. So you can you can try to like obviously the escalator. I don't know if that's an issue for a, a big cat. Probably not. Nope. You could and maybe not. you could get in the elevator. Yeah. But I I'm gonna I want to be there with the hundred thousand scattered mosquitoes because I'm just gonna oh. put some extra clothes on. No, you no, just... they will find you through the clothes. Oh, they will find your face. Really? Mosquitoes? Just unstoppable. Yeah, they, and they they they. they I think that they can go through walls. At can this they point. open doors I, as a group? They, they don't go to. under the door they, crack. They teleport. They will find your your carbon dioxide, and they will come and they they will they will bite you. I don't know over how, and over and over. I don't know how mosquitoes can go underneath covers and comforters, <laughs> but, but I know they can, they, can because I wake up with ankle bites that for sure were not there yeah. bed bugs no. Not, no, they're mosquito <laughs> bites so Don't listen bed bugs they're, yeah um, those were spider bites listen How dare you? I, I hate to tell you that spider bites aren't itchy <laughs> i've been informed i can't i can't get any other clothes from the stores the stores are closed so i'm i'm starting over <laughs> yeah you don't want malaria uh the the wasps are a, i mean that's too many wasps well not only that but all of these can kill you in certain different ways the mosquitoes I, can kill you Long mosquitoes playing that long like game. You're, you're going malaria on yeah, me. Yeah, mal you're they, going malaria on me. Mosquitoes kill like more. How people? many times do you have to go malaria on me? <laughs> like the only like one of the most deadly viruses in the entire world. They can world. treat me for it after the mall trip. Can they? Well, yeah. I guess it's only 24 hours. Yeah, malaria is treatable. All I know is it's not just malaria, but mosquito-borne diseases kill 725,000 people a year. That's and way those, more than tigers. And those people, right? <laughs> tigers is probably like five. <laughs> Um, those people did not have to deal with a hundred thousand mosquitoes. Yeah, they did. At a oh. what? Not not trapped inside of a mall. Yeah, yeah, no. but like in the it's, world, just in the earth. But I mean, just the, maybe the, millions. This mall, it, it's a two story mall, right? Yeah. I can't get away from the Bengal tigers if the stores aren't open. I can't. <sighs> What's the worst way to go? The you, tiger. You, you, let's say you go all three ways. The wasps. I think it might no, be I'm the going wasps. Tiger. Because a tiger is a pro killer. 
it's going to go for yeah. your neck, and it's going to be quicker than you think. It's going to be horrible. It could not be. Well, sure, it could use me as a chew toy. And that would suck. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, what I'm saying. But what the possible mosquitoes way? Is not that bad. That's death by a thousand cuts. The well, the wasp the wasp would be painful. The wasps they, would be a nightmare. I mean, they might go in your mouth. You could have said one swarm of a hundred wasps, not fifteen of them, and that would have been too many wasps. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could have said one wasp, and that might have been. Well, too You could many. have also just said fifteen hundred wasps is another way to say fifteen swarms of a hundred wasps. I would have been. Yeah, well, but we, well, we teach. But we're I like mathematics. But they're they're individualized. Like there's just. 15 groups throughout. Oh, they're out. separate? They don't, they're not one swarm. No, they're because there's 15 swarms. We they're clarify. competing for you. They're like yes. rival gangs. Yeah. They've yeah. got their territory. They're going to be coming yeah. at you snapping. <laughs> here, comes, here comes group number four. Uh, like, man. I mean, in paging the scientists here. Oh, no. What is, what's the deal with wasps? Well, I don't what like that do they, they don't. What do they do? I don't like that they don't sacrifice themselves on a sting. No. That's something that I think. You know, uh, God got right with the bee. Yeah. The honeybee wants to sting you, <laughs> and he pays the ultimate price. Yeah. Because there's, there's a cost, right? It's like, I'm yes. going to protect the hive at my own expense. I kamikaze. give my butt. Yeah. Kamikaze bee. But then the wasps come out. Like, and check this out, like, bees. They're just like, <laughs> watch this. Watch this. Bzz, ah, still alive. <laughs> bzz, ah, still alive. So I guess the wasps are like, they're out there Hold taking on. care of other pests. So Al is saying, yeah, wasps provide us with free, eco-friendly, natural pest control services. What pests are... The wasps are the pests? <laughs> this yeah, is, they yeah. are the, the pests. Wasps this is, this are isn't the, the old lady who swallowed the fly s situation. No, yeah, no, no. no they, take, <laughs> they take care of so many flies for us. <laughs> All right, welcome to Cockroach Pest Services yeah. run by the cockroaches. <laughs> What do they know? That wasn't my answer. You asked the scientists. Was that, was that I the, was just passing it along. Was that the top Google result? Yeah, <laughs> you're darn right it was. Um, I, the wasps are out for me. I'm between the, the, the two Bengal tigers and the mosquitoes. Because I do think the mosquitoes, if we're only in this mall for 24 hours, I'm going to get diseases. I'm I getting know into that. my own shirt. I'm going to do that thing as a kid where you pull the shirt over your knees and you suck your arms in and you put your head in. 100,000. But 100,000 yeah. in the mall. Not 100,000 are going to all find and eat you. How they fast will. are mosquitoes? They will find you. They have to be. Are they faster than a Bengal tiger? <laughs> now, uh, here's one other thing. No. You can, you can start trying. You could kill. You know how many mosquitoes I can kill here? Oh, I the, mean, the I, average flight speed of a mosquito is one to one and a half miles an hour. I mean, yeah, I will kill. That's slow. I can run thousands, faster than that. I will kill thousands of mosquitoes and I'm going to give back. I, I'm taking the mosquitoes. Final could you, answer. Could you run? Like, you know how many tigers I can kill? None. <laughs> if you run sprints to one end of the mall, go down the escalator, run sprints to the other side, the mosquitoes will never catch you. For 24 hours? That's, that's <laughs> what I was going to ask. Can yeah. you do it for that long? Can you do sprints for 24 hours? Uh, How fast no. is a human walk? <laughs> Let me drop that to one hour. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> and, and when if you take a Bengal tiger was chasing me, yes, oh, one there, hour at least. Uh, there's there's a point where you just you, How fast you run it? out of gas How and you turn around walk? and you put <laughs> your arms. Out. Average walking speeds are two and a half to four miles an hour. I'm just walking back and forth, but you're walking for into other mosquitoes. Yeah. Oh, because they're separate there's, rival gangs. Yeah. There's a hundred thousand of them. They will find you <laughs> stupid question but i'm still i'm still taking out so many i mean i'm that just enrages them more <laughs> oh g give me a break enraged mosquitoes the wasps they can't are definitely me. out and the tigers are out so i'm going mosquitoes yeah chloe from the website would you rather take a hot air balloon ride over the serengeti remind me what that serengeti is what is do you it think a, it is i think it's a desert but that also sounds like the Sahara <laughs> Desert. What is the Serengeti? Seren the Serengeti is like the the plains of Africa. Yes. Okay. So like a desert. I mean, no, not no, really. No, it's not. No, no, okay. that would be the desert of Africa. Yeah, I mean, there's like the, the watering holes. I mean, maybe and... it's a desert. I don't know. It's the plains, right? Think the of like where the Lion King is. Yeah, set. yeah. that's in the Serengeti. Well, everything the, the light might be touches, a desert. Let, Jason. let me tell you what the first Google result is. The Serengeti is a semi-desert. Grassland right. that is predominantly oh whoa well, whoop well, semi desert it's a grassland. semi desert yeah, grassland that's why it's the Serengeti maybe it's semi deserted like there's not a lot of people there is that a savanna um w w let me finish the question all right hot air balloon ride over the Serengeti or a helicopter tour of the Grand Canyon oh that's so easy. this is this is a positive question this is like yeah. 
which do you prefer? And and we've already gotten word from the judge who is on microphone, I think. Yeah. You've got a fear of uh of hot air balloons? I I can't believe that's a thing still, to be honest. Really? <laughs> well, why why is that? I don't know. I did isn't that terrifying to go I up in that thing? I can't and believe that's a thing. <laughs> I see like 12 of them out in the morning out here. No, in they, Arizona. people do awesome. it all the time. And yeah. you're, you just think that that's, is it the lack of like an engine? Yeah. There's that. <laughs> Cause you're just from the height. It's, it's powered by science. I mean, like it's, it's, but, it's but hold on. You're probably safer in a hot air balloon. I mean, you are safer you in a hot are. air balloon than a helicopter. Nah, For sure. I, I'm not, I don't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I control my own destiny in the <laughs> helicopter keep me away from those death machines those hot balloons i mean if i'm in a helicopter which i've never done i'm putting my odds of vomiting at 85 percent. i think you're gonna say like 800 percent oh, no <laughs> eight times no i think there's a small percentage chance that maybe i don't this to me is not about the hot form balloons, of travel uh, I'm, I'm fine this is not form of travel I don't care which way the travel is. You're going beauty. If you told me helicopter over the Serengeti versus hot air balloon over the Grand Canyon, I'm taking the Seren- Serengeti in both. I think it would be maybe maybe we're a little bit jaded. We're out here in Arizona. We got the Grand Canyon. And it's beautiful. But there are not lions, to my knowledge, in the Grand Canyon or giraffes yes. or rhinoceroses <laughs> or anything. Rhinoceri. Rhinoceri. <laughs> What First is Google plan? result. Let me tell you. <laughs> but I'm, is it just rhinoceros? <laughs> I'm going to tell you. The I'm, idea of like like f- moose floating over the Serengeti. Now in Brooks's hot air balloon, it obviously goes down and you're eaten by lions. <laughs> <laughs> but in mine, it's a pretty nice trip. Yeah. Just wait till the rhinos are shooting at you. Plus, they do play music over the Serengeti, right? So like imagine. the Lion King soundtrack. I mean, it would be awesome. Okay, so this is incredible on the plural of rhinoceros. Okay, the plural. It's rhinoceros. It is either rhinoceros or rhinoceroses. Yeah. Like it's like works. moose or mooses. No, I think both are no, mooses is not allowed. Yeah, mooses is, is out. But this says rhinoceros or rhinoceroses. And if you've never said rhinoceroses before, try it out. Because it feels super weird. Right now, just say it with me, rhinoceroses. That's more like fish or fishes. No, both be- of those are fine. But fishes works because when you're talking about multiple species of fish, or if you're swimming with them, yes, yes. Okay. If like at the end of your days, but I've, I've is anybody taking the Grand Canyon here? I'm not taking the Grand Canyon. I think it's extremely overrated. Why? Have what? It? Yeah, it's no, amazing. it's not overrated. It's yes, not it overrated. Is. Yeah, no, it you're, is you're a team big hole. <laughs> I I think it is beautiful. When's the last time you've been? Uh, two years ago. Well, that's pretty recent. Yeah, um, and. Were you looking at the Grand Canyon, or did you go drive somewhere else? No, no, it was like a big, uh, big canyon. <laughs> it's a mountain. No, we went up to the Grand Canyon, and you oh, go right. out, and it, and it looks almost like a Photoshop thing. It's really crazy. It's like, oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah, that's, okay. This is now Mr. I'm no, done. Hold on, hold then on. I'm yeah. done. This no, is no can... Mr. No Museums. I forgot. He can't appreciate standing yeah. somewhere for more than a couple minutes. I totally appreciate. Where's my 3D glasses? I totally. <laughs> I totally yes! appreciate <laughs> awesome things like I, you know, uh, like the show start. <laughs> the The Grand Canyon is overrated because people come from all over the planet. They travel because to it s- is a wonder of the world. Yes, it's 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 a, an extremely big hole. Uh, but like the beauty of Hawaii with lushness and oceans coming in and volcano that is so much cooler. The the and and it's, it's cooler. But it's not more unique because you can get that all over the world. Yeah, there's a lot of beaches. There's one big hole, and we got it. I feel it's like my Sedona <laughs> yeah, is Arizona's new slogan. <laughs> we got the big hole. We do. Have we the, did it. I, Sedona, you can't do it. Sedona's more beautiful than the Grand Canyon. Not true. That's but it's beautiful. Opinion. Sedona's pretty amazing. But I can't. It's hard because you don't appreciate any museums. I appreciate science museums. You've said the same thing about museums because you go into them, you look at something, and then you go, what do I do now? Yeah, most of them are super overrated. I agree with you. <laughs> we're not going to win this one, Mike. It's fine. Uh, but uh, I, but we're all taking the Serengeti, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Unless and also, they, if to- they fly in some of the African animals to live in the Grand Canyon, because it's semi-desert. Right. And uh, full desert. <laughs> The the uh the other thing is hot air balloons are awesome. I've I've been I've in never them been a, up in I've, one. I've been in them a couple times. They are 
really, really cool. They are a nice way to travel. They are. Do you ever uh, feel like you could fall out? No, no, you can't. Because it's so you, deep, You could right? jump out, but you can't just fall out. It's like, that would be like. You'd have to climb up. Falling this. out of your car. Like, I don't fall out my window. There's, I could climb out my window, but you're right. not going to. Um, the only downside to hot air balloons is, <laughs> this kind of speaks to Brooks, um, you can't, it, the landing <laughs> is a lot of guesswork. <laughs> it's like, they think, so there's usually like a Jeep on the ground that's going to follow you and meet you wherever you land because you know you, this isn't like x marks the spot and we'll put it down right there you're you're at the mercy of uh wind and uh things like that so i've always wondered and then when you actually go in for the landing you're not usually coming straight down if at least the two times i've been in them you know you're you're <laughs> two times is it tuck and roll you're traveling well the, and then the people meet you there and they're gonna try to grab that basket before it turns <laughs> over before it turns over? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, like the basket's going to fall. Yeah, but on the ground. It's once, a bumpy once landing. It hits, it's a bumpy landing. Yeah. But Which I've heard is the same with like uh, if you go skydiving. Isn't that a little rough landing? Yeah, it's a bit rough. Now, you've been, yeah. but you haven't been solo. Correct. Okay. You ever been on a solo Ooh. hot air balloon ride? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the pilot? No. Yeah. And did you go... Around the world in 80 days. I have not that, yet done that. That would be foolproof, though, right? Of all the things to accidentally end up in control of, the hot air balloon yes. is just stop putting hot air in it and you'll yeah. go down, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. If you want to land a plane or land a hot air balloon. Choose wanna, the hot air balloon? Choose the hot air balloon. <laughs> okay. I've watched the guy do it. He just stops putting air <laughs> in it. So, so what is it? How, how long is the training seminar to become a hot air balloon pilot? What it's if it, with his flatulence it never lands? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I could keep this. Is my flatulence that hot? I do run hot, so. <laughs> I just wonder if every time you're trying to land, you, you just I, I would just have to wait. back up a I'd little bit. I'd have to wait for summer, and once it's hot outside, I'd be, I'd, I could oh, land. Hit another thermal. And I'm just being spammed with pictures of people sideways on their landings. Yeah, it's it's a real thing. And Ow. We almost went sideways. Is there, uh, Do we? should we do one more or move on? Should, isn't there like an anchor or something they can use to prevent this An problem? anchor? Like you throw over a big <laughs> yeah. ship anchor about 20 feet above the ground? Oh, that's actually a good idea. And you'd put it out the direction that you're, you know, traveling away from. So then it just... That's well, then, not so bad. And then it drags the ground a little wait, bit? Wait, no, oh, no I'm then realizing you go down that hard. then you're going to eat it because when the anchor extends to its lock, locked position... You just swoop down. You're, yeah. you're toast. What do you think, Al? Let's move on. Okay. Hey, Spit Wads, if your New Year's goals are to manage your budget better and save some cash, then you need Rocket Money. I've been a uh, a user of Rocket Money for a long, long time. And look, it used to be known as Truebill. Now it's Rocket Money. It's a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending. It helps you lower your bills all in one place. I can tell you, I'm not lying. I've used Truebill for a really long time. Now it's rocket money. And when I used it, I saved hundreds of dollars that I didn't realize were going out the door. I even identified some fraud that was taking place on my account because I didn't know that I had multiple subscriptions. Over 80% of people have subscriptions that they've forgotten about, like a streaming service, those type of things. And uh, maybe it's even a free trial you forgot to cancel. Rocket money helps you quickly and easily identify your subscriptions. They do it all for you. And guess what? They can help you cancel them as well. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash ballers. That's rocketmoney.com slash ballers. Rocketmoney.com slash ballers. What's the difference between me and you? Well, let's get more sophisticated. It's nope. time, time for learning. And to be clear, no Google results for this one. We well, don't need don't it. Need we it. we yeah. are Google. What is <laughs> <laughs> We are Google. It's my middle name. What is the difference between boogers, snot, and mucus? Yeah, this is easy. Yeah, it is pretty obvious. There's one that seems to be troubling to me. The the boogers mm -hmm. What's the is there boogers any, are more solid? Is Boog there any moisture content allowed in a booger? Yes. 
there you, you can't have anything in your nose without any moisture. But is the booger itself have moisture or is there just mucus around the booger? So if it were to be, you know, uh, emitted from thy you, nostril. If you want to know what a booger is, I think the easiest way to think about it is, is this like a raisin? <laughs> and if it is, that's a booger. I was going to say, can you flick it? Can you, you flick? I, I can, can flick, flick? I can yeah. flick a raisin? You can't flick no snot. No. no. Well, no, you can fling snot. You could so, also yes. hawk a loogie. You sure. Which, that is also a fact. It's not in this question <laughs> yeah. at all. You're, but you could. It involves it. mucus. You could also jump over a box. So that's 202 stuff. <laughs> Two, we're at 101 sorry, right now. Sorry. That's a different class. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. boogers, are, they have a solid formation. Mm -hmm. You can flick them, and they look like a raisin. I'm not sure if it looks like a raisin. Yeah, I mean, uh, the boogers. I mean, you know, it could looks be a, like a raisin. A it could be a how small big are your raisin? boogers, man? I, I, I'm saying it could be a small raisin. They don't have to all be, you know, real large grapes here. But um, <laughs> yeah, the a booger is like a raisin. Okay. Um, now snot, liquidy, all mm, liquidy, drippy, mm -hmm. drippy. Yeah, yeah but mucus. That. Help me out. Thick. Thick, Wait, mucus and snot are not the same thing? That no. Is, that is I've used that as pretty unanimous. You've been uh, misspeaking your entire life. What yeah. if you blow into a Kleenex and boogers and snot come out together? Isn't that mucus? No. 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 Wait, what's mucus? It has to be thicker? Yeah. Yeah. It'll be thick. I think this is a bunch of hogwash. <laughs> We're just telling you the, 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 the facts. So, yeah. so there's a point when mucus could become snot if, Absolutely. It, if yes. it thinned out? Absolutely. Yes. And usually what happens is some of the mucus will turn into snot and leave yep. you. The rest will stay behind as mucus. And what do you have going through your system right now? Just mucus? Yeah. yeah. Because I can't see you. I can't tell you for sure. It's a real Schrodinger's cat. It could be <laughs> snot and mucus. I could have, and I could have boogers time. in there too. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Is there a uh, kind of like I, I a socially acceptable way to get rid of a booger? Because nobody wants a booger, right? There's yeah, no one out right. there seeking out the booger nose. Yeah. Like, There's, oh, man, I got one in there. Now what? There is a socially acceptable way, and it's to do it when no one can see you. <laughs> Um, that is the only socially acceptable way. And when you do that, you can uh, dispose of it in any number of ways. You could drop it on the floor. You, you can, can flick it. Fl yep. Wipe yeah. it on the okay. seat underneath. You ever done the bottom of the seat? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm not too proud to say I've done the bottom of a seat before, yes. How many How many flicks until you give up? <laughs> and then well, go and to wipe it? Wipe. Yeah. Um, and, oh, this is not a booger after all. We, it's, usually, all done it. it's usually four. It's usually four, but sometimes I get determined. Sometimes it you won't be defeated. It really is one of these. You and can then, roll a booger, and though. then you, oh, yeah, you you do the it thing gets rid where of the you, moisture. You do the thing where <laughs> somehow, you, let's say it's on your finger, and you take your other hand to flick Wait, it. You've done that, and then it, oh yeah, and then you flick <laughs> it hard, and it's on the other finger. It sticks to the other yeah. finger. You're like, what material is this, and how can we manufacture? That's this a is science. some great yeah. material that my body is producing. And those things are probably still on us somewhere. They have latched on. You've never gotten rid of that. My one. back is covered in little no. tiny boogers. Oh, of all the childish oh. conversations that we have, somehow every this one didn't. somehow this one felt like the absolute worst. I agree. We talk about poop all the time, <laughs> yeah. but you get into boogers. I mean, what uh, boogers, man? We it's not what like am you I, stop. A toddler? You don't grow out of boogers, yeah. and yet you pretend you do. Mm -hmm. As kids, they're not afraid to admit they I got a booger. Yeah jump see here's the thing you know there's there's a phrase that you can fart in front of those that you love yeah right that's a phrase yeah that's a phrase you never heard of that yeah i mean Have I, you i've that? never heard Hold of the it. phrase but the reality exists no 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 no. there's a phrase <laughs> yeah uh fellas back there the producers have you ever heard that phrase i have not wait okay <laughs> 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 Not as a phrase, but I, I agree with the statement. He's Googling. Yeah, I am. Because I'm... Is this a phrase? What do you think? Is Shakespeare? Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Where's this coming from? Well, anyways, it should be a phrase. As and now I get to... once said. No, this, is, this, this gets to be my quote now. You? Okay. My quote, put it out everywhere on the internet. First result, you could fart in front of those you love, Jason Moore. <laughs> um, but my point is, like, that, you know... It's kind of like a rite of passage. You, you're you're around your buddy, and you could fart. We were which building, happens first, the booger pick or the fart? No, that's what I'm saying. Like we were uh, getting this studio long ago. This was oh, an boy. empty room. We had our camera set up. I'm doing roundhouse fart kicks in front of my two, in yeah. front of my two close friends. They're pretty impressive. I don't want to pick my nose in front of you, right? That also, feels that's even so much worse. Is that like only if a marriage gets to like 25 years, you can start booger picking? Oh. 
You hit like the golden anniversary, then there's the booger anniversary. And then once you get to like 60, 70, you have to pick each other's noses. Yeah. Oh, but you, no, that's against. I don't think. They're, they're that's that against phrase the I know. Yeah. You can pick your friends. But you can't pick yeah. your friends' You can pick nose. your friends and you can pick your nose. Yes. But you can't pick your friends' exactly. nose. See, that's that a phrase. Jason yes. Moore. <laughs> what is the difference? <laughs> Just going to claim everything you like? <laughs> yeah. All right. Between being stunned, surprised, and shocked. Stunned, surprised, and shocked. Shocked. Okay. Okay. Stun. If you're stunned, you can't move. Right. And oftentimes it is with a stun gun. <laughs> I mean, sure. I've seen that people. That is one of them. I've seen people get stunned. And yes. what's the first thing you notice? They can't move. Yes. Now, they are. Usually you're surprised by the stun gun. Right. But because you're immobilized, it's, you're, it's just officially you're, you're a stun just on the stunned. record. Because I don't think people get surprised and certainly not shocked. Shocked has well, you to have movement. All three of those are a stun no. gun. Yeah, a stun gun also shocks. So maybe we take the stun gun out for a minute. <laughs> all right, well, since all three of them are the same for a stun gun. But we wouldn't call it a surprise gun. <laughs> surprise! <laughs> <laughs> You're on the ground. We should, though. Yeah. Um, it's probably move more units. Like This, this one's tough. I mean, I'd buy a surprise gun. <laughs> That'd be surprise! Rip. Surprised! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> you got zapped. Uh, stunned and shocked. So stunned and shocked. I'm I'm trying to put myself into like I'm I'm seeing cartoon reactions right. to these. Mm -hmm. And with stunned, you are not moving, and you're on your back of your heels. I feel like you've gone back to okay. Are your toes the, up? Your toes are up, and okay. you're the, and your arms are straight. But somehow you're not falling over. And I'm stunned. Okay. But then your hands go up when you're shocked. You're, you know what I mean? Okay. When you're shocked, it, 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 whether like it, this, it, it can like be on like, your head. It can it can be like jazz hands. It can be on your head. It can be, but your I, your hands can't stay down. I feel like when hands you're go up on a surprise though too. That stunned me. That shocked me. What is the difference? Shock. I I think a stun is. We got that one. You you're not moving. You're you got a bit of a, a paralysis. Shocked though, there's a little bit of uh of are you pain? In, oh really? Yeah. I've been shocked. You you shocked me. Yes. Yeah, yeah I can see that. I I mean, I certainly every time I touch of, metal and get shocked, I'm in a, in a little bit of pain. But it, like it, it can just be emotionally. Surprised is in its own category. Well, right? so, surprise has really grown over the last two hundred years because of mostly uh, the 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 parties. Know, the parties. Yes, <laughs> the surprise parties have really turned um, a surprise into a good thing. Like oh. that surprises me. That you would say that. See, that's the original usage. Oh, really? From about 200 years and ago. And then it just turned into parties only. And then it just turned into, well, not just parties, Do you like parties, a good surprise party? Gifts. Can you appreciate it? I've, I've been surprise partied once in my life. And, um, I mean, it's like other people opting you into you spending your time at something when you don't know. Yeah. I hate that. <laughs> I mean, that sounds awful. Um, I, but they're doing I, something nice for you. It's so kind. So kind of them. Can you opt out of your own surprise party at the surprise, like well, you certainly thank can. you, goodbye, you certainly enjoy yourself. Can but there, there's going to come with ramifications. There, you act stunned, okay. and then you fall over, and then medical condition. Yeah, and then yeah. you got then you get ambulanced out of there. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, it's worth it. So it's an expensive way out of your own surprise party. Have you had a surprise party thrown for you? I right? have. I've had one. Did you enjoy it? Were you happy that? And were you really surprised, or did you oh, know I, it was coming? I had no idea it was it was coming. I almost blew up the surprise party because it involved a trip down to Tucson to see my college friends. And then I was greeted by his and like we it got time to go. I, I can't remember what was a bunch of life stuff was happening. I was like, ah, do we even really want to do this anymore? And which I'm sure my wife was. Oh, so you almost didn't go on the trip. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah. So and and she had to kind of like, yeah, it's persuade just, you. Yes. And I was yeah, like, of course you do. Like, okay. All right, let's go. And then, yeah, it, I mean, it worked out because I was going down to see my friends anyways. and But then there was just happened to be a surprise party for me. So it was it worked out. Okay. I got to I got, you, had, you were obligated already. I already knew I was going to see the people I wanted to see. And, and then we celebrated me. That's the way to do that a surprise party. So like, you're going to the restaurant. So you're going to eat anyways. So right. might as well have your friends there with you. Yeah, no, that's the, not you, like I'm going home at the end of the night. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm so go. excited to relax. <laughs> And then you open the what, door. What a surprise party to do to somebody. Like, how we got to buy time. I'm going to take this person. Well, we're going to hit the gym. 
<laughs> we're we're going to do all this stuff, and we're going to be out till 11 p.m., and then we'll do the surprise party. Man. Do you guys want to do one more real quick? What's the difference between being ripped, buff, and yoked? Ripped, buff, and yoked. Yoked so, is steroids, right? 100%. That's the... Uh, <laughs> I mean, you're yoked out. <laughs> you're too big. Yoked now, is too big. Yoked is unnatural. Unnatural. And therefore, it is roids. I, <laughs> I imagine we have pulled that phrase like as in this is like yoked like an ox right yeah not like the egg right <laughs> right yeah because there's no l in this yolked but yolk so is it, we're saying that someone is so big they look they like could pull they could, they could pull a wagon they like could an pull ox. a wagon exactly like an ox. Right. okay so we're on to it you you have to be gigantic you have gigantic. to be gigantic and usually it's unnatural, it's unnatural. It comes, the only the only way to get yoked by not using steroids is sometimes you can fool people. Your body is not really big enough to be yoked, but your attitude is so bro that, that, you're people, that people just go, oh, yeah, he's yoked. Okay. Because yeah. I assume he does steroids. Yoked, <laughs> yoked is the part where other people other than that person say, why would you even want to look like that? Right. It's so big that you're like, oh, gosh, that's even too big. You want to know what I want to be? I want to be ripped. Yes. Ripped means ripped is, definition of the muscle. Yeah, ripped is me. way better than buff. Ripped is lean. Yeah. Ripped yeah, is yeah, yeah. ripped is the muscles are ripping out of your body. Yeah. I feel like you could yeah, it's it's clearly defined lines everywhere yeah. where the muscles are drawn onto you. And very vascular. You're gonna, Whereas buff buff is like in a shirt. Buff is Oh, that just, guy's kind of buff. You just no, buff is just you're strong. Yeah, buff really? is Really? Yeah. You're, you're a little bit thicker. Yeah. I think the biceps come into play with buff. For sure. For really? sure. So yeah, you can like, be strong everywhere else and not have big biceps and be buff. Okay. Uh, so, like, guys in World's Strongest Man competition, because those dudes are not ripped. No, no they're no, not no, ripped. No, not but they are, they're, they're buff. They're, they're, or yoked. Well, right, depending on uh, Depending on the tests. contest. <laughs> yeah. But so but I'm just saying, so those guys can be That's true. just buff. Yeah. They yeah, can, they're buff. They, they can be just buff. I, I really think the difference between being buff and being ripped is a body fat percentage yes that's what it comes down to because both are very muscular in shape strong people um but if you've got enough fat content where you don't look like you have a swimmer's body then you're buff if you are um a lean low body fat percentage like dad, like dad bod can be buff yeah dad bod is totally buff all right dad bod's not gonna be ripped <laughs> no goodness no maybe when he was younger yeah <laughs> because you could be buff without a six pack, right? But, you know what I mean. But every buff person does have the right to say, "I could be ripped if I wanted to." Oh yeah. yes, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little bit more diet, yeah. especially yeah. At, while you're I, taking the cheeseburger bite. Like, if I really I, wanted, yes, to. yes. I, I've noticed so much. You have the problem. So much soothing in my own life goes around <laughs> what I could do if I put my mind to it. I think yeah. the, and I, I, the we know the potential. We know we're mentally there. we're mentally strong enough yeah. if we choose to I do it. I could make right. the NBA. I could lose <laughs> okay, weight. Okay, well, let's hold on. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> you can't make yourself taller. <laughs> or younger. Um, <laughs> if I could be one of these three in real life, it would have to be yoked. <laughs> you, <laughs> oh, Jason, really? But we've just we've we've clarified you you can get there. Well, I could if I wanted to, but I don't want to. Oh. So okay. you know what I want? Just saying. Steroids. I'm, steroids. Saying, well, I'm sure Al knows a guy. That's true. I got you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and let's move into this kid-centered draft. <laughs> this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. When you're at your best, you can do great things, but sometimes life gets you bogged down. You may feel overwhelmed or like you're not showing up the way you want to. Working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of you because when you feel empowered, you're more prepared to take on everything life throws at you. Talk therapy is legit. It works. I am a product of it. I have had several difficult times just like all of y'all out there. And talk, ther talk therapy, talking to a professional really helps you get through some tough problems. We all have big emotions. Sometimes it, those handling those emotions can be very difficult, but the people over at BetterHelp, they're there. They're called BetterHelp for a reason because it is better help. And it's convenient, flexible, it's affordable, it's entirely online. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. 
If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Ballers today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Ballers. The Spitballers Draft. All right, today's episode features a draft of the best excuses you can use to not do your chores. So we were kids at one point in time, back when we were ripped, and uh, we have kids. So we've we've been around the block. We've we've heard them. We've heard them all. Mm-hmm. And there are there are some strategies that youngsters can take to get out of their chores. Just youngsters. I mean, don't you have chores? Don't I have chores? Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to get out of my some chores. Some excuses apply to youngsters better, but there are excuses for all sorts of chores. That's, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So, Mike. You yeah, are, you are up. First pick. Okay, so the best excuse not to do my chore mm-hmm. is because I, I was trying to think of this like from the parent's perspective, it can be difficult to argue with, with some of these things. Mm-hmm. Sure. And if they say, I've got to help my sibling do something. Oh, helping oh, the sibling. And I'm altruism. Like, yeah, I'm like, oh, man. They're going to work together <laughs> to get something done. And I want that. And I really want that means they're not fighting. Okay. All right. We can, we can hold so off you, on the so chore. Helping the sibling. Yeah, that's a good way out. Okay. That's a good excuse. Jason? Yeah. Yeah, I, I like that. It, man. So I'm going to go with – I'm going to go with the, the most common. Since we're at the top of the draft, I'm just going to go with, like, you know, the, the meat and potatoes here. I didn't know there was. Oh, there's a meat and potatoes. It's being sick. Dang it! Uh, You're sick. Dang it! I okay. I have feeling sick slash I got a headache. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, the, I got a headache line? Whatever How do you it argue is. with that? Whatever is your yeah. ailment. You have dang some it. kind of ailment. You know, I'm sick. I can't do it. I'm going to throw up. I don't feel good. Blah, blah. Nonsense. All right. That's a good one. It was my next pick for sure. Which means I'm going to have to go with one. It's a little similar to Mike's, only in that the parent would have a harder time arguing with it. Ooh, an even harder time. I'm going to go with, I was just sitting down to read. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's a good one. Oh, that's yeah. a good one. Oh, mom and dad, I was just sitting down to read. I mean, goodness, if I could get my kids to read more and be off the computers and stuff, they only read when the chores, of when course. it's chores time. I was just going to yeah. read. I've found that uh, apparently the best time for reading is, in fact, 30 minutes after you were supposed to go to sleep. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah, yes. that's the it's only just, time you're... It's, this is, this, I, I need to read. It's only good if it can keep you from having to sleep. <laughs> or do chores. <laughs> or do chores. Which, my next one is kind of a follow-up. It's in the same vein. And, look, I have I have been victim to it, and I don't know how to argue this. I don't know how to win this one. Because, for goodness sakes, I can't get them to do this. But, hey, son, why don't you help me with the dishes? Sorry, Dad. I've got homework. Yeah. I've it's got homework slash I need to study, right? Like, well, shoot. What yeah. am I going to do? I'm going to stop yeah. you from doing your homework so you can come help me. Yeah. So the homework that's, excuse. That's, that's a tough one. That's really tough. I feel pretty good getting the back to backs here on this okay. one. Okay. I'm going to go with one that um, I, I couldn't argue with it. Um, and maybe some parents out there, you're a monster. Um, <laughs> and maybe not, but I'm, I'm going to go with. It's my birthday. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Making me do chores on my birthday. Uh, it only it's a works good excuse once once yeah. a year. That's good. But that was it is. But also, wait, you're assigning your the the more household, which has the now legendary birthday week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're telling me that you two assign chores to your children on their birthday. No, I am I would never. But okay. I'm monster. I, I, th- that's the this monsters that do that. Okay, other okay, people okay. do that. I'm telling you that that is a foolproof way out. And and maybe you could try it in a, a couple other days of the year. <laughs> Put a little shock in your parents. Be like, oh, mom, it's my birthday. Oh, is man. She, oh, man. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. That's a good one. That reminds me of Clifford. Anybody remember that? The movie? big red dog? No, the the oh the uh, with uh, Martin, Martin Short. Yeah, it's like Clifford. Your birthday wow. was six months ago. I haven't thought of that movie in thirty years. Yeah, it's, it's Grandpa. Yeah, it's a little. little that came dated. out when we were young. Yeah. All right, Mike, you have two picks now. All two right, excuses. 
for not doing so any chores. I know the first one because it, no matter how many times this excuse is given, they, they keep trying it. I already did it. No! <laughs> yeah. That was on my list. Yeah. I already did them. Yeah. That buys you some time for sure. Yeah. Hey, go clean up your room. I already did. Yeah, and then you go check it. And you're like, and then you have a decision as a parent. You could go all the way up the stairs <laughs> <laughs> over the dog gate oh, man. and confirm or just take their word for oh, it. Oh, oh. And you're like, oh, man. You it's need, so far you away. You need chore checking cameras or something. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Because what can happen there is they can get away with that and then do them in a little bit. Yes. And then you might as well have done them in the beginning. Yeah, it's Dang good. it. That was one of my yeah, go-tos. That's, that's definitely was a top so on, on my list? list. All right. And then this one is legit as, and there's really, there's no one to blame uh, but me for wanting the convenience of this particular one uh, a, a product. When they say the vacuum battery is dead. Really? The battery is oh. dead. And you're like, yo! You literally can't. So you don't have the supplies. Yeah. So you're like, if, we're if, out of... Back in the mm -hmm. day when it was always plugged in, you couldn't go with that one. Yeah. But now the battery can actually be dead and you go. And they're leaving it off that charger on purpose, oh, aren't they? Yeah. And you try. And why does a vacuum battery take 48 hours to charge? What, let's get the scientists on this. Yeah. All right. That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, all right. So we, we've been kind of given excuses, but really, you know, we're due just, to the draft title. Well, due to the well, what is the draft title? Excuses. <laughs> Best oh. excuses to not do your chores. I thought it was most creative ways to get out of doing chores. Why? Why would it be that? Because I thought that was it's, the original. It's thing. on the sign right behind we you. We say all of it with words and stuff <laughs> at the beginning of the segment. Yeah. I mean, I'm a real good listener. Um, okay. Remember when we were trapped in a mall? <laughs> yeah, that was a room, Mike. Nice try. <laughs> All right, so if, if, if we're only sticking to excuses here, <laughs> well then, <laughs> per the rule, this per is the not. Draft. This is not um, just for kids. This <laughs> you're spilling on yourself. Oh, Andy took a drink and he. I'm not a good drinker. No, you you spill on yourself. <laughs> you do have a drinking food, problem. food and drink more than anyone I know. I'm impatient. You think that's what it is? I, don't, I do. I don't have time to get this can fully to my lips. Yeah, yeah, because the consequence is not much. Do you now? Who gen, cares, gen, man? Genuine question. Yeah. Do you spill on the way to your mouth, or do you spill on the way, like? You know, if I knew, I'd fix it. I don't. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't I don't know what's going on, man. I think my mouth might be malformed, and it's a handy, oh, it's a handicap. It's a mouth problem. Yeah, I think I might have like a little dead lip loose, or something. Loose lip. Loose. <laughs> Look, Google it, Go or or probably don't. Don't, don't I don't do know. that. <laughs> All right, um, this one is for yeah, stick with the excuses. This is for our age group. I threw out my back. Oh, what? Yeah, really? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, would, but threw I threw out their back. You know, no. He said it would be for our age group getting out of a chore, and that one actually, you know, it holds weight. Yeah, it's hard to argue with. You can't. Ooh, I can't lift right now. You can't my lift anything. You can't do chores like. If you've got a headache, you know, the headache excuse, I don't care. Do your chores. Right. I want to throw a in a little spasm. Yeah, but if you've got a, if you throw your back out, you can't move. And I can't prove whether or not you threw your back out. Yeah, it's kind of a, you're at least safe I gotta for like, a few times. I got to like throw a sock for him to catch, <laughs> uh, catch him off guard, be like, catch us. Oh, you could, you can't move. All right. Uh, <laughs> then you just, if they were actually hurt, then you just hit him in the face yeah, with something. Just like, oh, uh, my bad. I forgot your back was thrown out. <laughs> All right. I'm going to throw this one out there for my third pick because I have experienced this not working somehow, somehow for a friend of mine growing up, which is my friend is over. Oh, that yeah. oh, friend that, is over. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that happens because, all the time. Because I, when I was growing up, I had a friend, and it did not matter that I was over at his Ooh. house playing. Yard work was getting done, wow. even though the friend was over. And guess who got to help? The friend. Wait, I had to help with some yard work. That's genius. Yeah. That's genius of your friend. Invite your friends over. Yeah, like delaying the chores, knowing that you're going to... I mean, this is a Tom Sawyer Also situation. genius of the parents. <laughs> well, yeah. maybe he can help out. Let's get a little bit more yard work done, huh? <laughs> and then I will close it out with, uh, well, the, the, 
unfortunately, the most common excuse slash lie. Mm, I hope this isn't mine. I'll um, do it later. Uh, uh, yep. I'll do okay. it. I prom- yep. Hold on. Let me rephrase. I promise I'll do it later. <laughs> Not right now. I promise I'll mm-hmm. do it later. Why do something now that you can do later? Exactly. <laughs> or potentially never at all. Yeah. Yep. So that is my final pick. All right. My last pick is the easy 101 most real life common excuse that I get from my children. I mean, this happens so much that we preempt it now. We Can I guess? You, you can guess. They're, let's say they're playing video games or whatever. They're doing something, and now it's like, hey, it's time for chores. We're going to do chores. I'm in the middle of a game. Oh, I mean, oh. That, that happens all the time. Okay. I don't, care. What, I don't care making them get off. All right. I'm hungry. <laughs> it's always. Really? Like, always. <laughs> it's like as soon as it's chores oh, that's time. A, that's a good one. As soon I as have it's never heard that chores one. time. That, that definitely happens in my house, too. Wow. It's like, oh, I'm you were hungry. hungry. You were on your video game. You could have played another three hours. You wouldn't have been hungry. But the second you have to do chores, yeah. you're it's, starving. It's not just chores. It's it, 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 anything you are adverse to doing. Yeah. Homework. Oh, oh now you're you starving. Get the, I'm hungry. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're denying food if you make them do the <laughs> right. chores. Yes. There, Interesting. No, there's there's so, a whole speech that so we now receive. You've, now you've got to preempt that. That's what we do. We say- Oh, you feed them and then say do the chores? No, no, no. I don't I don't feed them first. I just straight up tell them. I, before I tell them, I'm like, hey, it's time to get off. you got to do your chores. It's basically, it's time to get off. you got to do your chores. I don't want to hear that you're hungry now all of a sudden. You can eat when you're when you're done. Yeah. You're, you're not going to starve to death. I bet you'll just, do the chores pretty quick. Just eating 30 minutes. They're not hungry. <laughs> Andy, it's no, a lie. It's a lie. That's fair. <laughs> not hungry. When they're hungry, they go eat. I thought you were going to go with uh, the video game one, which is now that they play all these online games. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can't pause. I have to pull you out of a game with your friends and ruin your life. Yeah. Yep. All right, Mike, final pick. All right, so the I, match is almost over. Oh, lie! Thirty minutes later, the he started uh, another one. And this one, uh, of course, you need siblings. But I'm just going off of my household. the The good old fashioned, it's not my turn. Yes, I have that on my list. It is, in fact, my brother's turn yep, to do the dishwasher. It's a good one. If you were keeping track, you would clearly know that it is not me who has to do the dishes today. And you might not have been keeping track. <laughs> no, so got, oh, no one's gotta, keeping track. You got to start thinking in your head. <laughs> Uh, which was the fairway? Okay. I'm not building out a chore system where I can like move the star or the dot, whatever. No. No. I, just, I want them to do their chores, but maybe I should build the system. I <laughs> had it. I had that too. It's not my turn. <laughs> it's not my turn. All right. There's our draft. Um, I that covered most of what was on my list. I did have bribe written down where it's like I'll do this instead. Mm. Oh. You know, try to make a negotiation. My yep. youngest hit one of his favorite lines is. Let me make you a deal. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, man. You I, do that for me and I'll do this? I get offered 25 deals a day. Nice. And That's they're, funny. They're usually in relation of of him doing something very small and then me spending a ton of money. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had uh, I already did other chores. You know oh, what I mean? Too it's much. it's uh, like, oh, I already took out the garbage. You're going to make me do the dishes? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the other things I was going to do for creative ways to get out of doing chores is get in the shower. <laughs> oh, okay. And um, never go home. That was <laughs> just, <laughs> you don't do chores anywhere but home, right? I mean, like if you take out the Unless garbage. Unless that friend brings you over to do the yeah, chores. Yeah, sure. But I'm saying like, if you take out the garbage here. It's work. It's work. Yeah. It, you can only do chores at a residence. I need to ask you about one more that I had on my list and whether you've used it. Okay. To get out of chores. Probably. It's the I have to poop. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just... Have well, you I'll, hidden? Have you done a hide? A, I'm poo, a, a poop hide. I'm a man. <laughs> okay? There is no man with children in this country that is not hidden in the bathroom, <laughs> taking too long to poop. And if <laughs> you... Sh- real constipated. You show me one that says that they have it, I will show you a liar. Yeah, oh, we, we do have the ability to summon our bowels. <laughs> when needed. When, yeah. when, when needed. <laughs> All right, any more, Mike? Uh, let's see. I mean, I had you know, just add a product, but it's kind of like the, the vacuum. Uh, mm-hmm. And then for me, uh, it, sim- it was too similar to the sit down and read. At least it was of like, oh, I got to go. I'm going to practice my instrument. Oh, mm-hmm. nice. Mm-hmm. That's a good reason to take up an instrument. Yes, because <laughs> you're like, and then as the parent who's paying way too much for private lessons, yeah. and you're like, fine, go, go practice your instrument. And, and nobody did the classic too tired, did they? 
No, because that's just that they're kids. That, that doesn't work. Yeah, it, it doesn't only work. works for grown ups. Yeah, <laughs> it only works at bedtime. Like, yeah. it, it, you know, I will say that you mean my, the reading time. Yes, my my, <laughs> my youngest will whenever that whenever it's like not quite his bedtime. If it's like an hour before, he'll be like, if there's chore time, then he'll be like, just tuck me in. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> like it's four thirty. <laughs> Let's go. Time for bed. Time for bed. What did we learn today? I learned that the first result from Google is ironclad, always right. <laughs> Never look past it. It is just pure information. Um, and and Gary, uh, you know, lock, yeah, lock, locked, locked and in. loaded, correct answer always. I learned uh, today that our our kids have similar excuses to one another. Yeah, it's uh, they have a hive mind, and I learned. When you land in a hot air balloon, you're probably going <laughs> to tipsy over there. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. Only about 50% of people make it <laughs> on the average hot air balloon trip, according to Brooks. The other 50%, I'm sorry. Final flight. Enjoyed it. Goodbye. Tell your friends. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to the Spitballers Podcast. To see what other nonsense the guys are up to, check out spitballerspod.com.